Today in part two of our series on the production control room, we're going to take a look at the new editing system up here and some advanced audio production techniques and learn how to use the audio board up here to record concerts and other events. Uh, we'll have the band in here a little bit later on so that we can go through the entire process. The editing system in the production control room is basically the same as the one in the library. Like that machine, this one also has a DVD burner and a Blu-ray burner and it also has the Adobe Production Premium Suite and uh, it has basically the same configuration as that machine. What's different about this one, however, is that in addition to that, rather than having the uh, royalty-free music library and royalty-free graphics library, this machine has an 8-channel sound card configured for recording multi-track audio. This is interfaced to our soundboard so that we can pipe various microphones and so on to it to record concerts and other events and then do the mix down in the software. In our previous video we discussed some of the basics of running audio through the soundboard for the PA system. If you remember from that video we were using the, uh, the video output right here and we talked about the fact that the channel had to be turned on and you had to use the ST button in the down position in order to feed to the stereo bus which is labeled here on the board as being programmed to speakers. Well, there are additional outputs besides just the one that feeds the PA system. What we're doing in this particular case is we have, in addition to the ST button, you'll notice a button marked 1 and 2, and another one marked 3 and 4. These are the group output buses that are here, group 1, group 2, group 3, and group 4. You can think of these as being the left and right of a stereo pair. So when you feed 1 and 2, you're feeding both of these faders. These are being fed to channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 of our Digigram sound card that's in the editing computer. So these will come into the computer as tracks 1 through 4. You'll position your stereo microphone pairing using the pan pot, which is right here. You'll see left and right on this pot, or odd and even. This will position it somewhere in the stereo image between the left and the right channels. Likewise, pair 3 and 4 work the same way. Depending on where the pan pot is set, that will influence where it appears in the stereo field. So these are tracks 1 through 4 going into the Digigram card. Tracks 5 through 8 are being fed from the aux outputs, which are controlled here. The, uh, or actually the aux outputs that are controlled here. You have aux outputs 1 through 4, those are being fed through to the Digigram card on channels 5 through 8. These are great for isolating microphones because those, these pots basically behave the same as the master output does here. Only these are for the aux channels. Over here, each channel has four pots that are used for adjusting the feed of that channel into these. So they work basically like the faders do down here. So if you have a soloist, for an example, and you want to isolate them from everybody else, you can use that microphone here on one of these channels, or you can put it into the group outputs and position it in the stereo image like we talked about. So what you'll end up wanting to do is if you have, uh, say you have four microphones, an easy way to do it, you might use the auxiliaries one through four and pop these up over here. Um, if you have soloists, you might want to put them in the stereo image where you want them to appear and then put them on the group outs. Either way, this gives you a total of eight channels to work with. You can configure it however you prefer to do it, whatever makes sense for the production you're doing. Now, in addition to the wireless microphones and the cable snake connections that we talked about in the first video, we also have overhead microphones above the stage for capturing performances. And they go from left to right. You can see one here in the picture. We have one, two, three, four above the stage. And an additional one out closer to the front of the stage for capturing a musical accompaniment if there's a piano there for the choir or something like that. These are arranged on the overhead mic feeds on the soundboard from left to right as they are on the stage. 
One other thing to keep in mind, something that you can do with this setup that we have here is you can use different sets of microphones for recording than what you're actually using for the PA system. The way you do that is those ST buttons that we talked about in the first video and so on, instead of having those down, you let those up. You release those and you're shutting off the feed to the PA system. You can still feed the audio recording system separately and those will not come through the speakers. That comes in very handy if you're recording a program and you're concerned about feedback. You can isolate a set of mics for the recording and use them separately from the ones that are actually being used for the PA. That way the levels don't influence each other. And with the eight channels it makes it easy for you to record your isolated mics on one set of channels and you can record the PA feed on another set of channels and then later on when you do the mix down you can decide which one has the better sound. For today's concert, what I intend to do is I want to, first off, I'm going to start out by normalizing the board. What I mean by that is I'm going to go through every channel and I'm going to release the 1 and 2 buttons on the fader and the 3 and 4 buttons, shutting off all the feeds that go to the group outs. And I'm going to turn down all the blue pots up here that control the levels going to the aux outs. So everything is going to start out basically off. Uh, Normally the way the board should be set up is the ST buttons should be down on everything. The 1 and 2, 3 and 4 buttons should be up. This is important because it prevents you from having any kind of feedback or any kind of unexpected audio effect someplace where you didn't intend for it to go. So whenever you do a recording, when you get finished, you want to be sure and go back through the board and release all those buttons. Making sure, ST, again, ST is down, 1 and 2 are both up. Or 1 and 2, 3 and 4 rather are both up. And when the buttons are in the up position, you should see the little white trim around the bottom of them. The effects we're not using, so we're going to leave those buttons, the, even the ST buttons, in the up position. We don't want to feed anything to those right now. Okay, we've done that. All of our blue pots are potted down. So we should be ready now to set the channels the way we want as far as how we're going to feed them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the aux outs for the overhead microphones. The left one I'm going to bring up on one, the one on the far left. Next one I'm going to bring up on two. Next one will be three. Next one will be four. And this will give us a feed for each of those microphones out on channels one through four, aux outs one through four on the board, which will feed the sound card on channels five through eight. I'm going to go ahead also and enable the four microphones that I'm going to use. Those are enabled. Another option you have is there is a button here marked Pre that you can select whether or not the levels coming out through the aux channels are influenced by these or whether they're fed separately. In our case, we're going to go ahead and feed them separately because I'll worry about adjusting that information or those settings rather in the software itself. That way you won't have to worry about, oops, I accidentally potted up just a little bit too late or anything like that. It'll take care of that problem since we are recording this rather than being a live production. We can edit it later. On my meters up here, I'm going to push, make sure my group button is in. Uh, this shows me the four inputs for the, uh, the group outputs, or the uh, settings for the group outputs. And my aux channels, the master volume for all of those is right here. And those, we're going to go ahead and set those uh, these four right here are the ones we're using for recording. We're going to set those to about three quarters position. The aux five and six are not used in our environment, so we'll leave those potted down. 
Uh, those may be used at a future time if we decide to make some changes to the way we're doing things or add some other capabilities. While we're waiting for the band to set up, we'll go ahead and get logged into the computer. We're going to log into the editing operator account. Just like the uh, lighting computer, this computer is off network. So your regular account will not work with this machine. So you want to log in as the editing operator. Okay, once we're inside, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to check the status of the sound card, make sure it's ready to go. So I'm going to come over to the start menu to the Lola Manager, L-O-L-A. And take a look at our configuration here. And I'm going to set it to default configuration to make sure it's ready to go. This lets you manage your track assignments on the audio card to make sure that uh, it's configured the way you want to. You've got all eight audio tracks here ready to go. Um, so we should be ready as far as the audio card is concerned. Now I'm going to go ahead and open Audition, which is down here on the bottom. It's the green icon with the AU on it. Here we go, File, New, Multitrack Session, and we're going to uh, go ahead and set this up with a uh, stereo master track on it. <coughs> Your choice is here, you can choose mono, stereo, or 5.1. Um, if you're doing something for video, you might want to put it in 5.1, that way it makes it easy to import it into uh, the Premiere program so that you can include it with your uh, video project and have your surround sound that way. Uh, for today we'll do stereo. Okay. And so we're going to change the name slightly here. Alright, this brings up our uh, session for our recording and we've got uh, six tracks by default. We're going to add a couple more tracks. So we come over here and we're going to go to track and we're going to add another couple of mono tracks. So now we have eight tracks available to us. Uh, in terms of our input, come up here and we go, we have to assign our inputs to the track. Right now it's uh, in default mode and we don't want to do that. So we're going to come down here to audio hardware and we're going to tell it we're using the ASIO device and the Lola card. And check our settings on that, make sure we're ready to go. Okay. We're going to assign the tracks using mono, and we're going to say that uh, input one, we're assigning track one. We're going to come down here and assign input two to track two, three to three, and so on. Seven to input seven, and last of all, eight to eight. Now we've got our tracks assigned. Next thing we're going to do, in order to make things easier for us when we go to edit, we're going to come up here and change the track names to match what our inputs are. We've got drums on the first two channels. I 
I'm just clicking here where it says track two and changing the names. And now the next one, and we'll assign the uh, next instrument to that, which is the brass. four were the overhead mics, so we're going to assign them accordingly. Left overhead. center and then right overhead. So we've named our tracks and we've set the mode up for them. We're ready to go. Um, next thing we're going to do is since we're getting ready to record you have to arm the record mode on each track, there is an R button for each one. You can, in audition, you can choose which tracks you want to record at a particular time. This way, if you need more than eight inputs, you can layer stuff on top of each other. In our case, we're just going to use the eight inputs because we're recording this like a live concert type event. So we're going to arm all tracks for recording. And we are ready to go. All we have to do now is when we're ready, we'll just come down here and hit the record button. Just like that, and it will start laying down the audio. When we're done, you hit the stop button. Just like a uh, tape recorder, basically. So our recording session is finished, the band is left for the day, and now we're going to get down to actually doing some editing of what we've just recorded. Although the editing computer has speakers connected to it, those speakers are connected to the onboard sound card. Because of the fact that we recorded the audio on the Digigram sound card with Audition, we also need to monitor the Digigram sound card during the playback and editing on Audition. Because the computer is also a video source, it is tied to the video switcher. So we're going to punch the audio editor button on the video switcher and bring up the video pot on the soundboard. Make sure that you normalize the soundboard now that you're done recording so that you don't get any additional sources that you don't want coming through the speakers. And turn up your video pot and you can turn up the control room speakers a little bit so that you can hear what's going on. We'll be using those to monitor the Digigram sound card. Here we have our recorded tracks. I'm going to play back a little bit of our music, see how it sounds. And there's two different views on the uh, Audition program. This is the recorded tracks, showing the uh, uh, showing them as recorded tracks. You can also go to the mixer mode, which you've seen earlier. Uh, this mode lets you adjust the levels of your sound. So what we're going to do is go back here to this view. And we're going to start playing. Our drums are a little bit strong, so we're going to go to the mixer and go. 
go to our first two tracks that we labeled drums. Bring them down a little bit. Down that overhead mic just a little because it's got a lot of drums in it too. Now, if I want to hear individual tracks, I can come up here and I can hit the solo button. That's just my drums right there. I'm going to hear just the brass. to go into the tracks themselves and trim them down to uh, the material that we want to have. So first thing I'm going to do here is we've got some stuff here at the beginning that's not part of our uh, audio performance. We don't really want to hang on to that for anything. So I'm going to expand our timeline a little bit. Basically I'm zooming in on it. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the time selection tool which is what you'll use for most things where you're snipping things out over multi-tracks like this. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to highlight this section of the timeline, all of my tracks, and I'm going to come down here to the track that's highlighted up here and I'm going to say ripple delete and I'm going to come down and you have to be careful here because you want to make sure that you do everything uh, the same to all tracks in order to keep them in sync time-wise. So I'm going to say time selection in all tracks. And that clears those out. So we've got rid of that unwanted section there. Um, now we can hit our play button. There's our audio performance. I'm going to uh, come down here and I'm going to actually pull back and widen out a little bit and I can come up here and I can drag this forward back here for a minute. Here's the end of our audio performance. And at this point we've got a lot of other material here we don't want. So I'm going to stop it here and I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to uh, pull back a little further. I'm going to try to see where the next performance seems to start. We've got something up here. This may be our next performance. Let's see what we've got here, our next track. Okay, so that's our next track starting right there. So I'm going to come back here a little bit. chunk of this, so we'll come 
back just a little bit. And once again, using that same tool, I can come down here and I come back. Time selection in all tracks. This does two things for me. I've just got rid of the extra stuff, and you'll notice also that it's giving me a seam here between my tracks. Uh, this will come in handy later on because when I go to export it, now I can export these pieces separately. Okay, we're ready to export our first track. What we're going to do is we are going to come up here and We've got down in the corner there is a selection and view portion of the screen. And we are going to select, we have our duration at zero. We have an end of 2.59 and some odd seconds, which is about the end of our track. So we've got that selected. And you can enter those values down there in the selection box or you can move the cursor in order to select them. I come up here and go to File, Export, Multi-Track Mix Down, and I'm going to say Time Selection. And it's going to come up with default settings. I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it in the D admin test folder that uh, I've been using for my project. It will try to default to the uh, Documents folder. We don't want to do that. So make sure you select your folder when you uh, go to export music from this. We're going to use a WAV file, which is pretty compatible with about everything out there in terms of burning it to DVD or whatever we want to do that way. So we're going to accept those settings, click OK, and it's telling me that there was already a file by that name and I need to select a different name. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change the name of the default name. I'm going to say test underscore track one. Click OK. It's ex exported my first track. If I come down here and I go to computer, my D drive, my admin folder, and this project in my admin folder, I'll find that there is a test track WAV file there. Now, when I double click it, it will open it up in Windows Media Player and try to play it. The thing to keep in mind is Windows Media Player and all the system sounds will still try to go through the speakers that are uh, here with the computer. Those will not feed to the soundboard. That's by design because when you're recording something, you don't want system audio to go into your recording. So it keeps that separate from on a separate sound card from the actual production sound card. Turn that up a little bit. And there's that first track. So we've gone from start to finish on that track. It's now ready. We can use whatever software we want to to uh, record that to a CD or we can convert it to an mp3 file if we want to use it for as an mp3. Uh, a lot of options available to us. But, uh, that gives you kind of a rundown of the whole editing process from start to finish. Uh, just like everything else we've looked at, we've just kind of scraped the surface of it a little bit. There are a lot more options there for you to play with. Um, best thing to do is to get in here and get your hands on with it and uh, see what all you can do with it. Our next video we're going to have will be featuring the lighting system and some fundamentals of how to uh, do synchronized lighting shows using MP3 files in that.